Welcome to the Geeks of the North, a hobby gaming podcast level of This week I'm here with the whole gang and we're doing some hobbying. At the same time, we're talking about miniatures and materials that are made out of. So why don't you sit back, relax, grab a paintbrush, and enjoy the show. Welcome to this week's episode of Guild... Uh, Guild. <laughs> Guilds of the North. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is awesome. You should almost keep that. Yeah. And now I said welcome to News of the North, which also threw me. It's not News of the North either. Welcome to this week's episode of Geeks of the North. As always, I'm your host, Paul Filio, here with my co-host, Antoine Bergeron. Hello. B. Steve. Evening, Paul. And Yom La Machine. He- Hello, everybody. Or as I like to call him, Eeyore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How's it going, yo? Uh, great, I guess. Yeah, great. Let's go with great. <laughs> now that you got Skype working, things are going well. Damn, man. Why always me? That's that's what I ask myself too. Why always yo? <laughs> <laughs> so this week's episode is a little a uh, little more casual than normal. Uh, you'll probably hear weird background sounds like opening paint bottles and swishing of water. That's because we're hobbying while recording. Because we're gonna we're gonna see what this sounds like. Because you know, there's a couple other shows out there that do this, and it might be fun to do once in a while. Um, in accordance with this, our main topic is gonna be a little little casual. We're just gonna be discussing um, different materials models are made out of and what our preferences are. Uh, but before that, we have all the normal good stuff. We have uh, our hobby time, which uh, we're gonna condense a little bit because we haven't recorded in a little over a month now, and several months since we're all together. So. We don't think you want to listen to two hours of Yom talking about what he's painted. And yeah, Antoine that's talking a about long the... cue. Yeah, and Antoine <laughs> also talking about uh, his 8 million projects. Um, so we're going to condense it up. But it should be a pretty interesting and entertaining show overall. And if not, I'll just keep making fun of Noam. T- yeah, Noam. <laughs> Yom. Already funny. making fun of him. Yeah, I yeah, mean, no, it's like natural. I, so it's funny that I started recording the show and I started calling it Guild of the North as opposed to Geeks of the North because we've been talking about Guild Ball so much and we're painting Guild Ball. <laughs> or I'm painting, painting Guild Ball at least. I'm painting um, Guild Ball terrain. <laughs> I'm painting Guild Ball scenery too. <laughs> I'm painting corn. So, you're painting corn? Yeah. Like on the cob? Yeah, exactly. Not okay. corn, blood for the blood god, corn. Well, that's what I was kind of confused. I'm like, how is Corn playing Guild Ball? Because I don't think I want to play against that team. Yeah, wrong game. Though I'd probably rather play a Corn team than a Slanesh team. Just <laughs> For some odd reason. Yeah. Well, you do have Salt that is Slanesh team, so... The Otter? Yeah. Otters are slanesh Really? Well, because he has some BDSM equipment on him. Yep. Uh, he has a safety harness. Uh, uh, oh, if oh, you that's look on safety. the art, it's not just safety harness. <laughs> I it's think a he has a safety word, harness. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why? Why do you gotta be like that about my otter? <laughs> and welcome to the family show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, since we're gonna try to maintain some semblance of something, let's um. Well, actually, I was gonna say let's jump to cool stuff on the web, but uh, that's a blank line. So I guess we're gonna <laughs> skip that and go right into hobby time. And as always, I'm going to get that uh, part of the show started. Uh, for one, uh, I'm first, and for two, it's uh, incredibly short. I haven't really done a whole lot of hobby in the last couple of months. Uh, real life's been super busy. Um, so just about the only hobby I've done has actually been at TempleCon when I went with Steve, and you kind of heard about that during those shows. Um, so I've been painting some fishermen, and I'm working on... Uh, the last two models that I own for the Fisherman right now, um, uh, Grayscales and Kraken. And I painted some Tectonic Craft Studios uh, terrain, which is pretty cool. Some little uh, fences and some crates and stuff. And, but I painted those at TempleCon. And the uh, patches for uh, speed uh, fast ground as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I built some tournament trays, because uh, at TempleCon, I, I bought the inserts to... I can't remember the name of the company, but they make a, a modular tournament tray. And... Uh, well, you bought leftovers, leftover trays. 
Yeah, exactly. So what I did was I bought the uh, the inserts that you put on the tray. Like the topper? Yeah, it's like a topper, exactly. Because their tray is basically a wooden board, and you have three toppers that go on it. And it come, the board comes with six. But uh, Muson Minis was liquidating the boards. And basically, they were not giving out all the toppers to people, or people were just leaving toppers. So the leftovers they had, they sold me for five bucks. <laughs> so I bought three toppers, and then I went to, to my parents' house, and I looked in the wood shop, and I found some scraps of oak. And I made myself essentially what's a drawer... Um, that fits the dimensions of three toppers. So the toppers sit on top, and they're latched in place with some uh, some pegs they fit over, which are actually screws, but they they kind of fit over them so that they latch in place. And then I uh, the drawer I uh, stained black and I lined with red felt, so I can carry my tablet and dice and templates and all that fun stuff. And if I wanted to, I could use it as a really really big dice box. Uh, cool looking but- dice box. Yeah, which yeah. isn't really useful for War Machine where you use five or six dice maximum. But And uh, since I thought that was so cool, I uh, decided that night to build a second one. So I made a, a small one, um, the size of one of the toppers for Guild Ball. So it's about, I don't know, 10 by ten by 8, let's say. And again, it's a little drawer, so it's got felt line bottom, so you can use it as a dice box. Uh, but at the time, I was kind of pressed uh, for time. My wife was wanting to go home and my daughter was screaming at me. So I kind of glued it all and clamped it all and didn't really check to see if it was square before I left. No. Oh. So when I came back the following week, it's not exactly square. Um, yeah, so I've sanded it and I've tried actually planing it using a, a planer, but... Uh, the blades on the plane are a bit dull, and the wood I used is oak, so it's a very hard wood. Mm-hmm. So it actually uh, it caused other problems. So yeah, I've uh, that one's a little less successful than <laughs> than the big one, but that's okay. It'll still be uh, it'll still be functional. And aside just, from just, that, just pretend that you made it first, so that it was a test, and then you did the, the other one. Next time you tell you tell a story. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I can tell people I did it in a rush and screwed it up. I'm uh, I'm not worried about that. And then uh, last for my hobby, um, and it's only very very loosely hobby. I've been washing uh, piles of resin of resin models. <laughs> um, but it's a bee prep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's future hobby. That's right. Yeah, it's got to be done. It's it's technically hobby related. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, some some knights that are resin uh, that I picked up, and you know some thanatars and a bunch of other stuff for my forty k mechanicum army. Or I guess that's 30k technically. Um, For that Fable game? Yes. That game someday will happen. Mm-hmm. Before you know it. <laughs> Before me, without any warnings, like showing up at your place. Today we play, Paul. Okay, with 9,000 points of work. <laughs> uh, what? And Jen just realizing that it's the weekend and Paul is not there. He's at his mom's place and you're there with your model standing in the driveway. Yep. <laughs> I'll play alone in the driveway. And you'll win. <laughs> Undefeated. I was going to make a joke about you and playing alone, but I... <laughs> Family show, Paul. Family show. Low-hanging fruit. You can make a joke about that, too. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at all that giant chunks of flash I didn't clean off my model before I started painting it. Shame on me. And I don't have a hobby tool in sight, so it's not going to help. Anyway, that's uh, that's all of my my hobby. Uh, games, I had one whole game in the last three weeks, and that was a game of Guild Ball against Steve. Yay! Where, uh, yeah, yay indeed. Um, he crushed me. I uh, I could not get real control of the ball, and since my team is based around ball control... It didn't work out so well for me. 
But as always, it was a ton of fun. So if I have to lose, it might as well be against Steve. Thanks, Paul. It was fun. I tried to score a couple of fun goals, but it oh, didn't Oh, yeah, you work. did that, that one-timer that I didn't even know was yeah, a thing. the snapshot. Yeah, he's like, I want a snapshot. Like, what's what's a snapshot? <clears throat> he's like, well, I just, you know, I do this. I pass to this player, then I make a kick. And like, but that player's already activated. He's like, yeah, that's fine. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Like, that seems a little cheaty to me, but, you know. Steve wouldn't lie to me, would he? Oh. He, he wasn't lying, was he, Antoine? <laughs> <laughs> not no, about that part. Yeah, not that. <laughs> the rest, though. <laughs> the cake is a lie, Paul. Yeah, Steve and his eighteen influence team. <laughs> Was playing low. <laughs> well, you wanted to take it easy on me, you know. Exactly. There's only so much cheating he has to do against me. I have to be subtle when I cheat, Paul, because you're gonna <laughs> notice one day. <laughs> It was funny because there was uh, another another player there, uh, Benoit Perubi, I think that's yeah. the name. And he and he had just played, and I I, I showed up for my match, and I mentioned that I was I had, you know won the last two or something, and he was all like, "Was Steve trying? Was Steve helping you win?" Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it was so hard to believe that I actually won something. Right? Yeah, it's funny. Like he doesn't even know me, and yet he knows that I don't win. <laughs> well, he started to listen to the cast, so maybe that's why. Well, it could be. Actually, the only person I ever beat is Yom during demo games. That's the that's all the, the time, every game. <laughs> every time you demo something to me, yeah. Yep. It's not planned. That's why... It's not even planned. <laughs> yeah, that's why I never want to play you again. It's like, uh, yep. oh, that's done. Undefeated against Yom. <laughs> Time to quit the game. Time to quit the game. Never play him again. <laughs> oh, you're on to me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's everything for me. Who's up next? I'll go. So for me, it's a lot and a lot and a lot of Guild Ball, both hobby and game wise. <laughs> so I did uh, some models for some commission models: uh, a fisherman gold, uh, a war machine caster. Uh, for my own stuff, I am finished Princess for my Butchers. My four other Butchers model are in different state of progress for this weekend. I also built Terrain from Isart Mold. I also tried my end at sculpting uh, a tree stump to use as an obstruction for Guild Ball and uh, casting that in Risen. That's the first time I'm using Risen for casting, so and it went well. The data is good. There's some bubbling, but uh, I'll have to see if I want to invest into a a vacuum machine to help with that. I'm not sure yet if uh, I really need to get to that step. Do you know how much that investment is? Uh, I think it's around five hundred dollars or so. I've seen. Uh, People do it for less uh, by uh, do-it-yourself uh, techniques. Just the vacuum machine, the, the pressure machine that sucks the air, I think runs for uh, 150 something like that. But after that, you need the cauldron and all the fittings for it, and I think that's another 200 So I'm not sure yet. I need to uh, look into it more. And there's uh, also size and capacity, so I don't need uh, something really big. It's just for... Small pieces for for fun. For now. Yeah, we you can always upgrade later, right? If yeah. if things go well and there's interest in the stuff you're making. Yeah, for sure. Uh, apart from that, I also finished uh, painting Olaf, the uh, the small snow golem I was sculpting. Uh, this he was uh, the the sculpting was done. He was cast, and he was sent to the client, and also sent to a bunch of uh, other people interested in it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. he's r- right now in, I think, in Sweden, in Belgium, in in the UK. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. So, a little middle snowman <laughs> going international. <laughs> uh, and that—that's about it. Uh, I, oh no, there's one last thing. I. Finally got back my War Master army. It was... I gave that to a, a friend who's doing some commission painting. 
but uh, it was a, a side project for him and in the meantime he had a kid he got his house uh, the house was not stolen but he had thief coming into the house rummaging through his stuff the whole army was thrown to the floor every bits and strips of uh, tiny war master dwarf flying into the air and getting chipped so all in all after more years than i remember i finally got it back not repainted really only uh, had two squads of uh, slayers painted so got it back one to paint because they're there's other people starting to get back into uh, Warmaster, and I want to uh, play the game, so I'll profit from other people playing. So I touched up some of the Slayers I got, and also started trying uh, my own paint scheme for the, the rest of the army on one of the Warriors strips, which are the d generic uh, Dwarf Warriors. And that's about it for Hobby. And for games, uh, it was mostly some Guild Ball, a lot of Guild Ball demos, uh, a couple of games of War Machine, and I also tried the uh, War Machine uh, Rumble format, the new format for uh, quicker games you play on a smaller board. Tried that with uh, Papa Guillaume. We, uh, we didn't have the rulebook with us, so it was only going through the, the PDF on the, our phones, which was not exactly easy to read quickly. So after the fact, we know we played a lot of stuff wrong, but the the format is still fun. <laughs> how uh, how many points is that? You can play about a, um how many points you want. I think we played twenty five points. I think something like that. The only thing is you start uh, closer, and you don't start on the table either. So oh, that's where you march onto the table? Yes. And the table is 30 inches instead of 48. And you march and have your first turn when you get on the table, so you're right in the other guy's face. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I want to reread it and try it again because I, I like the, the quick format it gave. I um I heard some people are running that I don't know what podcast I was listening to. Um, but they're doing it with no casters, no jacks, so it's like all solos and stuff. Okay. Oh, that that they... would be cool. Or with jacks, if you have uh, like a Jack Marshall. Jack, yeah, Jack it's Marshall. more limited, that would be cool, I think. But yeah, I, I like the idea. <laughs> yeah, that, that would oh, yeah, be fun. Well, yeah, that seemed like a, a pretty neat idea. So that's why I mentioned it. Mm-hmm. It is. Well, okay. <laughs> and that's about it. Uh, a lot of small stuff, but uh, a lot of repetition. <laughs> okay. Because I was looking at the notes like, oh, he's going for a while there. I can't do some other things. <laughs> but no. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, there's no need to say, oh, I painted that guild ball model and that guild ball model and that guild ball model and gave a demo to that guy and another demo to that guy <laughs> and on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, I guess makes sense. Same thing for me. I haven't been on the show since the end of June. We, so We haven't had a show since June. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, don't worry, you yep. had a couple, but it was like TempleCon or your uh, anniversary, two years anniversary, so it like, kind of yeah. made sense that I wasn't here. <laughs> the last but, one uh, we were on was in July, and since then, there's only had been one real main show. It was, was just the before the Taco Ball. I was on just before the Taco Ball. Yeah, that was the last one. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm not going to list everything either. No. Well, I, I wanted to, but Paul convinced me otherwise by being with kind words. <laughs> well, well, Paul can also, edit out anything he wants, so... There's also <laughs> a sort of, yeah, of you starting your own podcast to list all of those. <laughs> <laughs> wow, people are super mean. <laughs> no, 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 but if, <laughs> if we want to finish tonight... <laughs> Before I start to fall asleep. Go your own way. <laughs> okay, well... Um, uh yeah so a couple of highlights hobby wise um i was on the verge last podcast to complete my uh, brewers so uh now i've completed all my brewers it was ooh, all in all like nine models Woo! 
Um, not expanding into Guild Bar right now any further. I'm waiting for the next Brewers release. Well, Quaff was really, but not Veteran Spigot yet. So I'm waiting for to have both of them released. So that would be the completion, I guess, the end of my Brewers for now. Uh, other I like there's the there's a thing called the Shibi Swap going on on the web. It's a it's a painting swap like you paint. You put your name. Uh, it's like a paint exchange. Yeah, paint exchange. So you put your name, and you're randomly assigned another another participant. And so it's the sixth time that the Shibi swap happened. It's from the game, if from the Facebook group Shibi Gamers. Uh, it's the second time that I joined. So I don't know. It's, I've been seeing those Shibi swap going around, and I'm like, ah, I should join another one at least. To I don't know. Give back, feel better. I don't know. Paint for someone else, uh, pro bono. So, uh, yep, I joined with it. And f as a joke, I started painting like an impact model. It's a flying pony. So I started painting her like sky blue with rainbow hair, um, and it turned out that it was pretty popular at the end. It, it started as a joke, but it looked great at the end, and uh, it really got some. Uh, like mileage on the web thing. Okay, people really like that, apparently. Yeah, my wife liked it. I guess it's cute. I was not expecting like it to be to get that well, momentum. It's, mm -hmm. it's cute. How did it's you manage to get it out yeah. of your house? Yeah, <laughs> it was at, when I ordered it in the first uh, impact Kickstarter. Uh, the idea was to paint it for my little girl who we were. Who was really high on uh, little ponies back then, but uh, then the uh, it was just only a fad, you know. <laughs> she 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 moved on to something else, so I was like stuck with that. But even I was painting it, I was like hiding it because I didn't want to to confront her. I had to, I had to sneak it out of the house at the end. <laughs> um, then uh, other highlight of my hobby. Um, you remember the paint exchange we did, like. Several years ago, uh, Tonyo, mm -hmm. at the Gamers Vault. Yep. For me, you painted Urn from the duo uh, Urn and Down in uh, from uh, War Machine. Yeah, so, uh, the mercenary dwarf in uh, Ogron. Uh, Ogron with the uh, the big gun and the uh, little artillerist artillerist uh, dwarf. Um, I joined another group of really laid back painters on the web called the Fingers Finger Painters. Uh, with a bunch of cool guys and uh, they have monthly challenges and this month the challenge was unfinished business so you have to go through either through your collection finding the oldest model or f complete a project that was yeah dating so when I found John I was like oh I think it's about time that I paint him so that the duo is complete <laughs> so I painted it I just finished painting him the famous Archibald John is he, I think yeah, it was about time that I get it off the shelf of shame. Uh, aside from that, I had only a couple of commissions here and there, so I had personal time to work on my own models. So I've been catching up on my Signar, uh, painting models I had forever. Some are gifts, like Dynamo. I'll finally also Plan to paint my storm wall <laughs> that I had like for four years. Uh, the Minutemen that you also gave me, Tonyo, you remember that? Nope. You and Papa Guillaume, you gave me at one of the, I don't know which we, which year it was. You gave me a Minuteman. So I was like, you know what? I'm just like, yeah, digging through all my old stuff and catching up. And I'll leave it there for now for the hobby. Game wise, um. Since we talk about War Machine, I had, well, it was the release of Mark III some time ago, right, in in June, so I had 11 games of Mark III, precisely 11, because I know, because I downloaded the app Iron Grudge Mark III, so I, since I don't play a lot anyway, s compared to what it <laughs> used to be in Mark II, I was like, ah, it's not a big deal to record everything, just for fun. So it's 11 games only for from p players at the uh, Gamers Vault. And 11 different players. I still haven't played everyone there, so 
I guess the small community at Gamers Vault is bigger than it seems. We'll play someday, you I promise. Yeah, you keep dodging me, I you know. I mean, did we add a demo and you won and you don't want to play me again? <laughs> is that why? <laughs> that, was that even Mark? I think that was Mark 2. Yeah, it was Mark 2. Yeah, last time we played, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. At uh, Adepticon a year and a half ago. No, 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 no. No, no you played at the... Oh, no, yeah, right. We played that game with Cartier where you just After broke my back. After the Ball demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just completely destroyed me and then we never played again. No, I, I, I see it. the pattern, Daria. I see the pattern now. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, aside from that, I was last time I was mentioning a lot of Frostgrave. Like every episode, I was mentioning Frostgrave. We finished the top of the Lich Lord campaign, uh, run by uh, our friend Derek. Um. Yeah, so it was a really fun campaign to to join and play, and really again like a laid back game and friends and very casual. Uh, I succeeded in my personal little challenge of like killing the Leaf Lord at the end of the campaign because at the end we had a like a we played a, a game all the teams together, all, all the war bands together, everyone on the same table. So I had the honor to kill the Lich Lord. Um, so that I kept a little souvenir, took his grimoire of a uh, Lich Dom, and hopefully in the fluff, my little necromancer will become a Lich. Well, we we'll never know, I guess. That's, that's a good, uh, good aspiration, I suppose. Yeah, I guess for a necromancer, like it was a really like relaxed guy. His name was uh, Chillax, Chillax the necromancer. It was a really casual guy, relaxed guy. But yeah, at the end, all he wanted to become undead. <laughs> really? Chillax the necromancer? Yep. I guess he's I mean, friends with Spintax the Green or something like that. Yeah, His reference was, was called Netflix. You see the pattern? <laughs> see where I'm going with this? Netflix and chill? Yeah. Really? Chillax. Yeah. Netflix and chillax. <laughs> Could go. I suppose it's better than Boba Fett. But, uh... <laughs> Good call, good call. <laughs> um, five points for people. Five points for people who get that reference. Yep. Not the fact that it's Boba Fett, but it, you, yeah. if you don't get it, please, please get some internet knowledge. <laughs> that that's a gem. That's a gem from the old days. <laughs> yep. Is it? Um, and there's a link in the show notes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there are ints in the show notes. <laughs> Um, yeah, aside from that, um, last time I recorded was just on the verge of the first Taco Bell. That, and until then, I only played with uh, Tapper, where I'm talking about Guild Ball, of course. Uh, I only played with Tapper until then, and I played with Tapper for the tournament. And after the tournament, I switched to my second, the second season to Captain Hester's. And I've been playing Hester's ever since. And now we are on the verge of Tago Ball 2, where I will bring Hester's. Uh, she's a totally different captain than Tapper. Um, most often than not, I don't know what to do with her. <laughs> I think I don't know, a dozen or 15 games, and I'm still not even sure, <laughs> sure every time what to do with her. But uh, sometimes she pulls out a win. <laughs> most times she... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, weird, weird, weird captain. I don't know. I, I've been looking at all the season two captain, and Esther is still uh, a weird captain to me. Like what they all like weird? all star, like uh, star players a bit, but not her. She's more like support and let her team shine. Yeah. Okay. More something like uh, Ox. Yeah, but yeah, I guess yes. I was uh, about to say Ox can get in and. Do the thing, but uh, Esther's can also do it. So yeah, I guess he's kind of like Ox. Yeah, but uh, you're used to a, a super captain. Yeah, that's that's why maybe I was used to Tapper. It's like it's pretty simple with Tapper. You just charge in and beat people up. But with her, uh, yeah, you don't even know where to put her influence if she will activate first or uh, last or you know. Yeah, she has options at least, but. Eh. It's just after even 15 games, I'm 
still learning her. Feels a bit like late, late bloomer. Anyway. Um, and last, I guess, I wanted to, to try Zombie Seed for a while and I had a shot at trying Zombie Seed Black Plague. Uh, it's not miniature game, but I mean, it's a board game with miniatures. Uh, really fun. I just felt like it was like a, a modern day, but not modern day because it's not modern, but it's medieval, but uh, like a, the new version, the uh, today's hero quest. It, it, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, big we should, friendships. Uh, we, should, yeah. we should get together and try Silver Tower. Totally. Yeah, well, I thought you it? were. Yeah, I thought you were going to say we should get a, a the whole style hero quest campaign on. <laughs> no, because Tanya, you will kill us all as a dungeon master. <laughs> I don't think we have the old French version, and Monster I only have one hit point. It's not advanced hero quest I have, so you don't you have the that three minute tried, or card. Uh, no. You remember that we tried uh, a lot of years ago at your apartment in Verdun. No. <laughs> no, you don't. You just destroyed us all, man. <laughs> we had no chance. <laughs> okay, maybe. Wow, what a shock that is. Yeah, Antoine just evil. When he plays a dungeon master, just like in Super Dungeon Explorer, just destroys people. <laughs> Steve. Yeah. There you go. Your it's turn. my turn. Yeah. Wake up, Steve. Ah, uh, you're almost done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you done for five minutes? Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding. Uh, Abby wise, well, it was uh, mostly gill ball. Uh, I painted uh, some scenery uh, for uh, lending to Antoine for the next taco ball uh, next weekend. And that's pretty much what I did for Abby. And gaming, it was all gill ball all the time. Oh, also for Obby, I don't know if it counts as Obby per se, but I did modify the certificate for the second Taco Bowl. I think and, that counts as hobby. And ordering a new Guild Ball team counts as Obby or gaming? Uh, Obby. Either or. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be Obby for his soon. And yeah, I decided to plunge and buy another team since this one was all finished so good for you yeah are you gonna reveal steve or is it like a top secret thing oh uh, it's a, it's a secret mm, mysterious and there may be other secret teams you didn't yeah that's exactly <laughs> what i was thinking about <laughs> wow i don't know how many reference we'll be able to get into this show <laughs> Oh, Wait till the talking them. badger gets on, then you'll get the reference. <laughs> Shapeshifter. <laughs> that that show is so strange. Entertaining, but strange. I like um, that they, it's all improvised, but whatever they say becomes like the canon? golden standard. You can become canon. Yeah, it's like anything they go with, it's canon. Yeah, then they have a hard time remembering sometimes, which is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they say a lot of strange things, so I can blame them. <laughs> yeah, that's true enough. True enough. All right, Steve, anything else? No, that's it. Okay, so why don't we take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk about our main topic. So, uh, we'll be right back, geeks. And we're back. All right. So uh, 
We are refreshed. Steve's topped up his liquid English. Oh, not even. And... Just plain water. Oh. I replaced you. It's okay. You homes get some liquid English? Yep. <laughs> I'm taking a, a lot of abuse here, so at least I'm drinking. Hey, I haven't said anything abusive to you in like 20 minutes. <laughs> Get over yourself. <laughs> That's been enough to cry. All right. Oh, I've said worse things that make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. Main uh, topic. Main topic. Materials, miniatures are made of, and what we, uh, what we think of them. So... I mean, let, let's... Okay, so I think everyone knows there's only a few materials that miniatures are really made out of. Resin. Hard plastic. Restic. Or more like an ABS plastic. Right? Or craptic. Crafts. Yeah. It's not the easiest stuff to work with all the time. And and me- white metal. Is that, did I miss anything there? Lead. Oh, that's a good list. Well, <laughs> lead is a variant of white metal. And and lead hasn't been used in years, right? Because it's, you know, kind toxic, of toxic and stuff. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. It's still used in some places. Or not full. Some lead, country. I've, yeah, I've seen miniature advertised like last week, which contained part of uh, lead. It's white metal with a percentage of lead in it. So. Okay. Unless it's make and the oh yeah. Instead of uh, may contain nuts, it's may contain the lead. Yeah. I can't believe people would still use lead. Anyway. I mean, it has advantages. It was nice and soft, but... That was also a disadvantage. You yeah. dropped your model and... Uh, oh, boy. It didn't shatter, but uh, you get some awful weird dents sometimes. Yeah, and it's I had an ogre face that remembered being dropped on the floor. Did you drop it or did you throw it? No, I dropped it. <laughs> 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 and I fell right into it. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Yom. Poor Yom. Um, yeah, okay. So, so guys, what? Um, maybe we should start with something simple. Like, uh, let's, let's talk about metal. You know, the, the traditional miniature material. What's um, what do you think some of the advantages to metal are? Um, and personally, I think uh, detail levels really, really good. I um, think it's the second IS in detail level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, durability is excellent. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, f- feeling on the table. Like Moving. you, like you get. Yeah, yeah like like you've actually you're holding something, right? Like there's yeah. yeah. I like it. But, uh, I, I can I can understand that. I, I mean, if you that. play trolls, maybe not because you have to carry them around. Uh, but feeling, I said feeling on the table, not okay. back problem in chiropractor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> invoice that I have to pay. It feels. I guess nice, trolls, yes. trolls must be one of the heaviest metal armies that ever there was, right? Like, yeah. I can't. I suppose you go back in the old days and you had. Um, Maybe Warhammer Fantasy orcs and goblins, and you did a, like a night goblin army where you had like four hundred models. Maybe that would be heavier, but or well, even the back then they had plastic black orc for most of the the troops. My dark elf are almost all metal because they're all the old sculpts, and they had no plastic troop back in the day. Well, well, that's the, true. Uh, the old uh, black orc metal models—they're quite heavy. Yeah, and they're cool too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still have some of those. Me too. I kept a couple. Really? Mm. Yeah. This, that was actually, I think, some of the first models I bought just for the joy of painting. And I almost never do that. And when those when those were released and they were new, quote unquote, I uh, I picked some up because I thought they looked awesome. They did. They still. Yeah. They, they oh, they still look cool because they based the plastic out of uh, out of those when they did it yep. first. Absolutely. Okay, we're quickly getting off topic. Um, <laughs> and with us, that's dangerous. 
Okay, so what, what about some of the some of the downsides? Um, the chips. Difficulty in putting yeah, the paint chips. Difficulty in keeping the models together, right? Bits are heavy; they tend to fall off. Lots of pinning. It's a pinning, and pinning is hard on him. Yeah. Well, it, the the problem well, is more if you drop it or something, it tends to break more than a, another other material. Well, it, it well, breaks in the sense that things come apart. It yeah, doesn't exactly. break, break, right? No, it won't break. The parts won't break, but it's going to come apart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the um, feeding on the table does, is compensated the, or in the downside by the weight, overall weight of the models. Made for, if you like you said, if you carry an old army in metal, it can be quite heavy. And also... Shipping costs a lot if you're a middle model. Because most places charge shipping by weight. So you pay for all that uh, white metal you're getting. Yeah, in more ways than one. Yep. That's very true. Also, uh, most middle model costs more than plastic. Yeah, especially nowadays. Because the costs of white metal have gone up uh, yeah. drastically in recent years, right? Which is what forced a lot of companies to to switch. To switch to plastic. Because metal also has the advantage of being one of the easiest things to cast. Yeah, right? it's There's simple. V- very little wastage. Yeah. Because right? anything you miscast, you just throw back in the pot, melt down, and start over. Right? So you don't really lose a lot of material. Yeah, and compared to resin, the set time is extremely well, uh, quick. Yeah, nearly instant. Yeah. You know, in the time that it takes you to get that mold out of the spin caster, generally it's set. It, uh, it astounded me when I went to Reaper and I watched them cast stuff. How the stuff just, like, flies out of the spin caster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it takes no time at all. It was impressive. Uh, I would say that cleaning them, like filing, not always easy also. Not the artist ones, but not always easy. Uh, yeah, and another one of the other disadvantages is uh, if you want to do uh, repositioning of the model or conversion with the model, you have to get the uh, uh, a metal saw. You get your jeweler saw out. Yeah, yeah that's exactly, true. and it's rough to model. Yep, and do conversion with metal model. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yep, yep, I'll yep. give you that. I never think of that because I'm not much of a converter. So. That's why I have Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> like, Antoine, I need this piece done like this. Can you, can you I have a project me? in mind. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's good to have friends. Yeah, I still have a, a circle axe here. But I need to get back to you. Yeah, well, we haven't seen each other in forever. Yep, I know. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go to, to plastics, hard plastics, GW style plastics. So ease of work, like e- ease to work with. Yeah. There, there, there is nothing simpler to work with. Nope. Right. The plastic glue is an amazing thing because it melts and fuses the pieces together. So you don't have bits falling off. And it's toxic. So it smells good. <laughs> it, that, that too. <laughs> Then um, even super glue will make a really strong bond. Yes, though not not, not as strong. Unbreakable, as... but no, not unbreakable, but strong bond. Yeah, no, this is true. I prefer it because if I ever want to modify a model, I can at yeah. least I can snap it off. But if, yeah, if I drop it on the floor, it won't break out. Yeah, this is true. Uh, granted, that that's one hundred percent correct. I think I'm actually eating more paint right now than is going on my model because this brush spends most of the time in my mouth. <laughs> um, ding, what color ding, are you tasting? Ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> blue gray. Uh, great coat gray from P3, to be honest. Nice vintage. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was a good year. I think it's a 2014. Um, so yeah, plastic models. So they're easy to work with. They're usually cheap, not counting GW, but usually they're cheaper than other materials. Yeah. Um, 
easy for companies to... they cost a lot more to set up but it's easy it's cheap yeah. to run plastic and, and and let's talk about that for a second so the problem with uh hard plastics is the the injection machinery and the molds cost a fortune mm-hmm. um if i'm not mistaken a single mold uh, in the if you source it in the US is going to cost you 10 to 15,000 dollars for an injection molding machine US dollars uh, if you get them out of China my understanding is it's uh 3 uh, to 5,000 so if you're doing a, a multi sprue setup well that's that's a lot of tooling costs right there and, and let's not forget the cost of the injection molding machine yeah if you know so you're going to do your own production in-house. Yeah. The the mold costs that much, but you cannot use any sculpts for plastic. Because in plastic, you cannot have undercut. While in resin metal, you can have undercut. Yeah. So the, the sculpting and the setup costs a lot more because it's more complicated. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing to consider is that uh, even if once you have your molds in your machine, those molds weigh something like 800 pounds a piece. Because they're they're made of steel or whatever, um, so you need a fork a forklift or something to move those molds around and load the machine. You're not doing that by hand, well, not easily anyway. Mm-hmm. But and now we have lots of dead once air. Once they're okay. done, <laughs> running, uh, doing a, a print run, injection takes seconds and it costs cents. pennies. Yeah. This is absolutely true. Which is the big advantage, right? That's why mm-hmm. yeah. that's like the holy grail of miniature production. But there's not that many people that do it. I mean, aside from aside from GW, who else really does it in-house? Warlord in the UK? Uh I think I think man actually does Mantic source from China or do they have their own? Do we know? I'm not sure. Avatar and uh, what about Avatar of War? See, that's the thing. I don't know. And a lot of these people contract Warlord to make their stuff. If you look at, um, well, what was the name of the company that did the Leviathans? Uh, Dreamforge, right? Mm-hmm. All his stuff is produced at Warlord. Hmm. Um, I think, um, I think Secret Weapon Minis, their tablescapes, hard plastics, uh, those injection molded uh, table tiles, that's all done by Warlord as well, I believe. So there's not that many players because the the costs involved are just just so expensive. Even Reaper doesn't have they have a machine, and they have some molds, but uh, usually they, they basically use it to make bases. Last time I was there, which was last year, that's that's all it does is turn out tons and tons of bases. Because the mold is almost indestructible, and once it's done, they use it for everything. Yeah, you know, and that that a uh, forty thousand dollar. I think it was forty thousand dollars. They said uh, mold the machine there. Now, and it was it was impressive, but if you want to do a big production run of stuff, you, you need multiple machines. It's a huge investment for companies, and miniatures just don't make that much money. Yeah, let's uh-huh. be quite honest. You know, unless you're GW, or uh, maybe Fantasy Flight with X-wing. I can't think of anyone that really. I mean, P3 does have some hard plastics, but that's all manufactured in China. Oh, they don't do it in house. Not the plastic. Oh, okay. Which is why it was actually it took so long to come to market, because they had troubles with the um, the manufact like the they did the design of the models, but they they didn't do the layout of the sprues. So when the guys in Asia did the sprue layouts, the stuff they got back was practically unassemblable. Like unassemblable, is that okay. a word? Un- Unassemblable? I don't you know. You would be the one to know. Yeah. I would be, I would be if uh, I was a better Anglophone. But, uh... <laughs> Sadly, I am not. Uh, um, uh, are you really saying that you're a low-grade Anglophone? I'm a low-grade Anglophone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shall we get level... another Anglophone on the show? Yeah, I'm to double-check two... you. <laughs> I'm a level 2 Anglophone. Um, <laughs> at least a level 3. No, but uh, I don't know what the heck I was saying. Gosh darn it! What <laughs> was I talking the, about? That the soft plastic, uh, hard plastic from PP that came back from China was oh yeah yeah yeah. 
Yeah, so they, they had to go through several iterations um, of each of the models. I think the uh, the one in question I'm thinking of was the not only the Grolar, but the uh, the Crix Colossal. That's why it was delayed coming out. So they had to keep going back and forth because they, you know, okay, now you fix that, but this is a problem. Okay, now you've done that, but this is a problem. So, uh, I mean, now it's gotten better because the, the company kind of understands what Privateer Press wants out of a kit. But it's funny how sometimes a cost-saving measure just backfires on you. Because that was the whole point of it. They're like, well, why are we doing all this extra layout work and stuff? These people make models. That's what they do. They manufacture models, right? So if this company manufactures models, they should be able to handle that. Let's, let's get them to do it. Cheaper to pay them than pay our own guys. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Backfire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes saving money uh, <laughs> isn't always your best bet, but... Anyway, in the end, you know they they got they got the product out. It's all released now. People seem to be happy, and the plastic kits are coming out uh, faster and faster. So, all good. Has any of you uh, assembled one of the new art plastic from PP? No, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, I've assembled the the growler. They went together it? nicely. They went together nicely. I, I can't complain. the The kit was well made. Uh, the model's really nice. I would be honest, coming from a world of Games Workshop, the, the detail level on the kit is pretty low. But it's but, Kador. There's no but that detail being, on their stuff. Exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. That being said, it's a Warjack, right? Warjacks are not they're not space marines. <laughs> so the, the detail level is generally pretty low on a Warjack anyway. I don't know. And I'm that's, working that's, on Dynamo right now. Is it on plastic No. No, no. No, but uh, you do have a new one that is, don't you? Uh, no. No, no. It's rustic. All the, all the things I have are rustic. Or metal. Oh, okay. I thought the... I thought the Centurion kit or something was plastic. Okay. Well, maybe, uh, but Yom already have <laughs> enough of those decks. Yeah, I have the old one. The, the small one. The, the baby center. Well, I don't think it was that much smaller, was it? The the, the spear is shorter, but I think the jack is still a pretty good size. Yeah, Similar, I really like that a kit. Bit, a bit smaller, but yeah, it's not it's not the gross scale difference that like my Kador jacks are, for example. Yep. Because <laughs> those are those are just darn special. If you feel the one of the old some old metal destroyers and old metal juggernauts. That I put on the table with some of the the recent plastic kits, and it was silly, like yeah. the um. I saw the new the, um. The Grolar is huge, right? Yeah. yeah, well, that's the same kit as the Grolar. Yeah, it's huge compared to the original. And even compared to like the plastic juggers and stuff, it's it seems quite a bit bigger. That may just be an illusion, but. All right, it's a. Uh... They're, they're good kits. I, I can't complain. Hmm. I was pretty happy with the, uh, the overall quality. Just like I said, it's it's a jack, right? So detail levels are, are are not super elaborate, but you wouldn't really expect it to be either. Pretty much we're saying that our plastic is cool for bigger kits, and we like our plastic for bigger kits. I like hard plastic for everything. Yeah. I... I, I I, I would miss, love my I, stuff I, to be, yeah. I would love more of my stuff to be hard plastic, but, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Another uh, thing that our plastic is good for is uh, conversion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's really because... easy to cut through that and re-glue it. Absolutely. Plastic snips and an X-Acto knife, and you've got everything you need, right? Yeah. Not exactly so with anything else. No, because resin is easy to cut, but it's also easy to break. Yeah, it's, yeah it's so brittle. Well, plastic is tough, and you can do about anything with it. Mind you, not not all resin is created equal either. No, no for sure. Um, but uh, on the plastic side, uh, our plastic is really good for that. It's probably the best material for conversion. Absolutely. And it paints well as uh, too. Yeah, it paints well. Doesn't chip. 
doesn't you don't, chip. You don't have to wash it before uh, priming nope. it. Nope. Exactly. Either. Yep. Well, you don't have to wash anything, technically. You just well, end up repainting it all. Yeah. <laughs> Technically speaking, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. That's okay. We'll just we'll just leave uh, you uh, doing whatever that was in the. Uh, well, it's just <laughs> in I the final cut. It's full wonder. Agrac Earth Shade, and it tastes awful. It's been a while. Uh, yes, Agrax Earth Shade is probably the worst tasting of the washes. Um. Actually, I have one of the... This is totally off-topic, but whatever. Uh, their first line of washes there, when they came out with those, not the inks, but the ones after it, they had a red one. I don't know if I still have it here. And it's it smells different than the others, and it tastes like death. <laughs> I don't know if it's... I don't know what it's made from. It's probably, you know, pure cadmium, and I have, you know, ten weeks left to live. But uh, it's... It is horrid tasting. Yeah, I think yeah, I know which one you mean. I don't remember the name, but I remember smelling it. Like you open it, and suddenly you're like, "Is there like a dead animal somewhere?" <laughs> yeah, it's got like a weird, sweet, strange smell to it. Yeah, like decaying stuff. Yeah, exactly. It smelled like Nurgle. That's a Statement. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what Nurgle smells like. <laughs> Actually, no, I know. La <laughs> last time I changed my daughter's diaper genie, I, I, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> All hail Papa Nurgle. <laughs> I don't know what we're feeding that kid, but we gotta stop it. Uh, okay, so. Any uh, other advantage to our plastic? It makes for light armies, which are easy to transport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's. And also, make uh, when you're playing uh, rank and file games like the old uh, Warhammer Fantasy, it makes for uh, easy to magnetize models. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. You don't need uh, super people... powerful magnets. I mean, how many people magnetize their warjacks, right? I know those aren't hard plastic most of the time. We're going to get there, but. Same same principle. Yeah, plastic. Mm -hmm. Plastic is a super light. Any okay. drawback to plastic? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't think so. Detail level, maybe for most people. <clears throat> yeah, less. It's a bit less detail than uh, metal, I think. Though I think those boundaries are really getting pushed now. Yeah. It as much as. Game Workshop and uh, manifold yeah. pieces are getting so small. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at all the Age of Sigmar stuff, right? Say what you want about the game. Say oh, what you want no, about the, the, but the model are still good. <laughs> yeah, say what you want about the style of the models, but the the technical level of the models is excellent. Yeah. You know, not everyone will like the crazy over the top aesthetic. Nope. Right, Antoine? Yep. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the technical the technical expertise is certainly there. Yeah. I don't really see other disadvantage disadvantage especially uh, as a, a consumer. A cost, yeah, on a, the a consumer, consumer size yeah. side there's no uh, disadvantage. It's more on the manufacturer side that mm -hmm. you see this advantage, I think. Maybe one of the main disadvantages is that it's not <laughs> more accessible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that's true. And that might actually be a fair a fair thing to say. Right? Big advantage, big disadvantage is the cost. You now it doesn't matter how good something is, if we never see it, it doesn't matter. Right? If if no one else can bring it to market, that that's a really big uh It's a shame. A really big disadvantage. Yeah, but we're starting to see more companies like Avatars of, of uh, Avatars of War is getting out hard plastic kit now. Manifo is all hard plastic. Uh, PP is starting to have some, so it's getting more accessible. 
It's funny how PP is one of, is one of the later people to the game, right? With this of the big companies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there's that. Um, well, anyway, I guess that's a different material. We won't go into that. And I, I don't know, but uh, is art uh, uh, bolt action? Is it art art plastic too? Yep, that's yeah. Warlord. So, um, the other thing we forgot to mention is, of course, there's that soft board game plastic, like X Wing is made out of, right? And the, like dust was made out of. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. That's another material. Yes, I'm saying we yeah. we completely forgot that in our list. Yeah, I, I mean, well, I, I don't I don't know anyone aside from Paulo Parente's studio that really uses that material because it's not regular board game plastic, right? And he manufactures all the X Wing product, and he of course manufactures his own product, the dust product. So, but he doesn't ship them. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. Well, Yom, do you have any news? No, sorry, uh, no, I'm sorry. Someone else was writing me, so I had to I zoned out. It was a, a jab at uh, Dust, the, the game yeah. that is lost at sea, at somewhere. <laughs> is it part of the uh, the stuff that's stuck on one of the ensign uh, or engine? I don't remember what company name. Um, no, apparently not. We had another email from uh, Battlefront saying that uh, they receive everything at the UK. Uh, Headquarters, so that they're gonna ship. Oh. Like now. So uh yeah, I guess a bit of luck <laughs> at some point somewhere. It was not uh, stuck in the, on the on the dock somewhere. Because yes, it was from the company that uh, that filed from bankruptcy. Okay. No. Really? Yeah. yeah. But some somehow I guess the the ship was already uh, on its way. <laughs> I don't know. The ship was cleared, so they were able to get it off. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky. Yeah, I mean... because it's like, come on, man. What are the chances? Yeah. You're so lucky you get to wait three years for your Kickstarter. Well, <laughs> he gets to not wait more three other years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. The game I'm is still waiting dead. for... <laughs> Well, that's good. There'll be more stuff to play Conflict 47 with us. Hey, if I can proxy, man, I'm all in. <laughs> it's a shame, too. I-, I know Dust wasn't everyone's cup of tea, and I do think Conflict 47 um, has a-, a nicer aesthetic to it. Depending but Dust was a... Yes. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I said I think. I didn't say it does. Okay, I okay, said okay. I think. Are you going to tell me my opinion's wrong? No, 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 I mean, no, 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 no. That, that would be something you would do, but... <laughs> no, no, of course not. I'm a nice guy. I'm the nice guy. Okay, are we going to are we gonna have that Game of Thrones discussion all over again? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope, 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 Because nope. <laughs> I got my gun loaded and I'm ready to go. <laughs> you want... No, but seriously, yeah. It, it, I, I think, uh, in my opinion, Conflict, I think, is a, is a nicer aesthetic. But it's definitely uh, influenced by Paulo's stuff, and I think if they deny that, they're just you know, lying to themselves. Or us. <laughs> yeah, what other uh, weird war? It doesn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, there's stuff also you could say that's from Paulo's that was influenced by Gear Krieg and stuff, right? Mm. So. Oh yeah, or EA, was it? EA... 22 or something like that. Alternate to World War II, there was another game with that before Dust came out. Yeah, yeah. No, they did not invent Weird War, come on. I never no, claimed no. that either, but uh, I don't know. It was it was a cool cool system. Uh, I will miss it. We'll see. I, I have doubts that it will be reborn when suddenly all the Montrealers will get their stuff, but uh, I have big doubts. I have room yeah, for a third a game now the first grave is out of the picture. Well, it's good to know you. I'll keep you uh I'll keep you apprised of the situation as things unfold. <laughs> <laughs> Next material. Okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh sorry, I just 
I, I'm being a, an idiot and uh, trying to hold the model while painting it. So I'm rubbing paint off almost as fast as I'm putting it on. That's okay. Oh, of course, we knowing this... A, a small inter... Uh, a small... Not in... What's... Intermission. Intermission. What are you working on, guys? We're doing a... We're hobbying while podcasting, which is a first for a us. First, yep. So, Paul, what are you working on? Um, at the moment, I am working on uh, grayscales for my fisherman. Uh, I was working on Kraken earlier on the podcast, but I've I've put him aside for the moment, and I'm painting uh, the armor plates on grayscales in my really pathetic version of non-metallic metal. I'm disappointed <laughs> you didn't say. Release the Kraken! The really big Liam Neeson voice. Yeah, why? I, uh, <laughs> I, I told uh, my wife the other day that he had an ability called Release the, and she groaned. <laughs> the, uh, I have to say, there, there's a surprising amount of flash in really annoying places on these guys. Um, I've got all the grayscales flesh painted, and for me it was the first time I'd ever done uh, African American flesh. And, uh, it's coming out fairly well. It's not all. It's not finished, but it's it's mostly finished. It's coming out pretty well, and I realize now there's a big chunk of flash in his eye socket. Oh. So I guess I'm just going to oh. leave it there. He's going to have a a sty in that eye, I guess. Of any places. <laughs> yeah, it's like the eye socket. What the hell am I going to do with that? It's just going to stay there. No one will see it from two feet away anyway. No, it's an opportunity for a scar, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, Yom? my my, mo my models aren't painted to be uh, looked at close up. <laughs> Yom, what are you working on? Well, uh, for the online, I'm working on my Signar jacks. I have four Signar jacks in front of me. Um, I was just prepping them for the airbrush. I was uh, blocking with uh, blue tack the zones that I don't want to spray. You're masking, you mean? Yeah, masking, yeah. Okay. Masking okay. with blue tag. That's what I use to mask when I do airbrush. I have like this old blue tag that I reuse all the time. It's not super sticky now because you have to remove some of the stickiness so you don't rub off the primer. But uh, it, it works well. So now I've done all the all those four jacks and all their arms also so they're ready to go under the airbrush. So right now I'm working on a scenic base now that I'm done with the blue tack. Sneak base for Dynamo. Mm, good. And Steve? Painting pumpkins and corns and vegetable and fish from the tabletop uh, world uh, scenery we I bought at TempleCon for the Taco Bowl. Yeah, the, the grocery set. Yeah, exactly. It's really fun to paint. It's you should put some from... pictures of those like on the web. Like maybe post in the um, in the post of this episode. Like well, we comment. should all uh, make pictures of what we're painting right now, like a web picture, and we'll, I'll add them to the show notes. Yeah, because those are really cool, Steve. Yeah, uh, I'm almost tempted to get another set. Are they pretty similar to what you got, uh, Yom? Similar, yes. Some even some of the items are look kind of exactly the same, but there are <clears throat> specific items that are better looking, I think. Okay. So it's interesting. And your set. set already looks good, so if that one looks better, it's a really good set then. Yeah, yeah but have my fishies paint... and corn. <laughs> my paint won't be as good as his. Don't tell him that, Steve. I know, his ego is high enough, but still. <clears throat> Being realistic. Like my ego is big. Yeah, you know. I hang with you guys, right? At, le at least we know <laughs> Yom will never ask me again to comment on his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was still the best. Yeah. Passive aggressive ball. Oh, it wasn't passive aggressive at all. It was completely neutral. <laughs> A true neutral ball. Exactly. He said, you, you know. He complained that I never comment on anything, so I commented. Well, this was borderline chaotic neutral, if you want. <laughs> That's well, why only, only because I know how Yom would react and see it, right? So. <laughs> kind of like pushing his buttons, if no one's ever noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Through a new <laughs> realization. What? Really? 
it's, it's a shocking realization. Yeah. <laughs> shocking news. I On no my idea. side, I'm painting uh, tree stumps. <laughs> Terrain <laughs> in the end, overall. Ooh, exciting. And they Ooh. paint up pretty well. <laughs> well, a tree stump is not that hard to paint. <laughs> That's because the sculptor did a great job. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> there was too much talk at the same time. What did you say, guy? I said Enjoy. it's because the sculptor did a great job. That's why they're easy to paint. Oh yeah, yeah, so, sure. Okay, I heard because the sculptor isn't that great. <laughs> so the the revised version is much better than what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, you call me passive aggressive? What the hell, man?" <laughs> I've learned from the best. <laughs> and what, Yom? What did? What are you saying? I was just uh, asking if you mentioned that it was this Tristan that you sculpted. Uh, no, but yeah, that's the, the stump I, I sculpted and casted. So I have a batch of five right now that I'm doing for the tournament. And they're almost done. After that, I have other terrain and need to put some paint of my uh, other models to have them at least colored. I'm the <laughs> I'm running the tournament and my stuff is not finished. so <laughs> It's not looking good for me. <laughs> What uh, are you taking your butchers? Well, I'm bringing them just in case uh, if we have uh, a buy to at least have a game with the the buy player. So uh, I don't really mind not having the full eight. I'll bring a, a fixed lix and that's it. As long as I have six functional models, that will be fine. And how close are you to? Uh... I have four completed, and uh, the other, I have two that are colored. So, with uh, maybe another hour or two, they'll be uh, fine enough to to use on the table. I'll I'll varnish them to project the work and just bring them in case. Overall, I hope I won't have to play this weekend to be able to run and take pictures. And judge and uh, and chat with the players which I was not able to do last time so I would like that uh, I would like to play but uh, I'm totally fine to not yeah. play there's advantages and disadvantages right? yep I get that and especially I, I need as I'm uh, we're running Sension I need to use the tiebreak software so I don't know it really well. It can be a bit longer to enter the results. So overall, uh, I wish I don't have to play. We'll see by Sunday, well, by Saturday. Oh, I didn't know they had a software to manage their their events. Well, it's a third party, but they, uh, they officially sponsor it. Okay. Okay. Much like... Uh... Uh, DreamPod 9 used to do with Gear Garage or may still do with Gear Garage yeah yeah but uh, Gear Garage is not is game specific while Tire Break can be used for other game oh I had no idea I've never heard of this before cool it's UK centric but uh, you can use it for other places they, they even uh, take payment for your game for your players so you can get player to register on Tire Break and they will Transfer you the money by, by people once the registration is done. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a nice tool. I haven't explored it fully yet. But uh, I might do it that way next time instead of doing by the store and by people on my own. Uh, on they my charge own you a fee? <laughs> they probably charge the, the transfer fee, same as people anyway. Okay. It's a good idea. Uh, I haven't looked into it. change location. Hmm? It's a good idea, in case you change location. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, that's why I, after we changed location for the Taco Bell, I started taking the, uh, the registration only online. To make it simpler to deal with. So, back to our topic? Yep. Hey, what was our topic again? Okay. <laughs> um... Next material. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we've gone from plastic, let's go to restic, as we like to call it. The 
the kind of ABS uh, hard plastic, oh. but very, very or hard just plastic. Or just BS material. Yeah. <laughs> or just BS. Crap dicks. Well, it's got some... Okay, let's be honest. It is low cost and easy to produce. Yeah. Right? That's why it's yeah. used out so much. Yeah, that's why it's there. And the details... Are not, low. Not necessarily. I don't think that's fair. They're lower than our plastic. Absolutely. And it's because you're not... It's not uh, high-pressure injection molding, right? Yeah. So... The reason um, you can get good detail out of that hard plastic is because it's it's molded under high pressure, which is all the way the, also why the molds are so expensive. Um, in this case, it's it's just a. I'm assuming it's still pressure cast. I don't know the specifics. Oh, probably but, because they injected in the mold, but it's just not the mold are softer. Yeah, exactly. So, but so, it's low cost, easier yeah. for people to produce. Yeah, but most of it, it's industry advantage and not consumer advantage. Yeah, that's it's true. bendable. Yeah, well, the, you the... you won't break one of those models for sure. No, it's very durable. That's right, but it doesn't go together with uh, plastic glue. So you have to use crazy glue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because in the uh, let's go just for the the good points for consumer. Apart from them not breaking, is there really any good points? Easier to assemble than, than metal models. Okay. But harder uh, than resin and are plastic. So t- they're yeah. still on the low end. <laughs> assemble, oh, yeah, yeah, no. but not easier to clean. Just easier to assemble. Like. Yeah. Uh, clean, cleaning is the, to... biggest, is the biggest challenge, I think, with them, to be honest. Yeah. I was trying to find uh, good points for it, <laughs> not list other bad points. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's hard. It's a real challenge. <laughs> yeah, you know that was a material that the industry went to out of necessity. Uh, that that's and that's really what happened, right? Metal became too expensive. Miniature companies had to find an alternative that they could afford, uh, and it had to be something quick, right? They couldn't yeah. wait three years to switch to it. They'd go bankrupt trying to make metal models in the meantime. Or they'd bankrupt us trying to buy the models. Yeah. So So th- that was really... You know, much like uh, Finecast, it, it was a stopgap measure in the industry. I, I don't think we'll see it around much longer as uh, hard plastics become easier to do and a little bit more cost-effective. Yeah. Probably right. Because I can't wait for the day to not have to clean those. You know what? I just we, we I just can, don't clean them. Yeah, <laughs> we we can jump right in right into drawbacks. Cleaning <laughs> rustic is a pain. Yeah, yeah. It's soft. If you try to use you an exact tool, it. if you scrape it or file it, it will just rip off. Yeah, you get to, you get like. Um, Almost like little tears in the material. Yeah. The only thing I've found that works kind of good is the uh, mold line scraper. From GW. Yeah, or any other company that do the same product, but it that works. Kind of. <laughs> Better than Exacto. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I mean... I remember, I remember the first models I got. They were made of that stuff, um, the bastions, and I tried cleaning them, and I just gave up. And I thought I'll just paint around the mold lines, but the mold lines are so bad on them; those models never got painted. <laughs> They're sitting in a drawer. Yeah. I mean, let, let's be honest. There's plenty of other models to keep in company in that drawer, <laughs> uh, but. Yeah. I tried to paint them. I really did. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Yeah. Uh, I, it was already mentioned, but they, they don't glue really well. You have to use a super glue or gorilla glue. Yeah, and even then, I find it doesn't doesn't stick that much. 
Well, because you have to, uh, most of the time you have to sand the the, the joint mm -hmm. just to be sure that the glue will adhere to the surfaces. That's what yeah. I, I found. Yeah, but it's a pain. <laughs> yeah, I know. Compared to any other material, that one is the, the worst of the gang to, uh, to work on in every way. Yeah, I won't. I, I'm not going to argue with you. Don't, uh, don't look at me. Yeah. On the conversion side, have you ever tried doing conversion on that type of plastic? It's harder to file and work, so it's probably a bit harder to work on than our plastic. Still easier to uh, reposition than metal is, I yeah. would say. I've done no, some I didn't with really, my uh, I, trolls, so... I did some, uh, but only light conversion, like more adding to it than re changing anything about it. When I did uh, the gallon that you don't like, Tony. Oh, he's very tall, isn't he? Yeah, it's because it's taller, so Tonya doesn't like, like it. But in, anyway, the it's more like I added to it more than really change anything about it. I'm drawing a blank. What model are you working? Talking gallant. About? My gallant. On oh, the gallant, I, I heard gallim, so I was I had no idea what you were talking about. No, the, the tall yeah, anorexic yeah, yeah. word. Gallant plays uh, character yeah, tag. Yeah, yeah. For, now I now I remember. The really never... ugly, like, gangly one that he did? Yeah. I'm kidding you. I'm kidding. I actually think he looks cool. I never tried, but uh, with a lighter, can you repose reposition it? or With like, a lighter? To... Yeah. Boiling oh, yeah. water, yes. I wouldn't use open flame. Uh, I've used open water. flame on resin, but that's it. A... Yo, you're crazy. That's just all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> open flame. <laughs> What the hell, Steve? <laughs> what the hell? Fire is my friend. He did say that he, uh, he sniffed sniff his glue. <laughs> yeah. That is true. He, he did mention the glue sniffing. Yeah, and also, on the detail side, it's, uh, it's less detailed than our plastic or metal. Yeah. In fact, it's the, of the four material we're mentioning... Except maybe if we mention also a board game plastic, it's probably the worst of all four. That is a fair assessment, in my opinion. Yeah, totally. Oh, I, th I think you just said it all, Paul, that uh, it, was, it was a necessity for the industry and a temporary measure. Yeah, I, I, I really don't think... Another... I really don't think that was ever intended to be a long-term solution to anything. No, Abyss likes it, so as soon as companies can move away from it, they will. Yeah. And that can't happen soon enough. Oh, no. Okay. And next material? Resin. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I'm confused by... I've I've just pulled out three bottle, <laughs> three pots of wash from my uh, my paint rack, non oil, non oil, and non oil. Like <laughs> apparently, I don't have anything else in my my repertoire of liquid talent. <laughs> liquid talent. Nice. I was looking for my Agrax or shade. You know, I'm all out of Devlin mud now. I had to cry a little bit the other day. I still have one. Half a pot left. That's it. Yeah, I I dumped a pot. So it was, it was the end of that. There was tears. But anyway, I digress. Uh, resin, yes, resin, good. Lung <laughs> cancer, bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a pretty good drawback, isn't it? It could kill you <laughs> slowly, painfully. But oh, your just, models will look fantastic. Just like lead can kill you too yes but we don't use lead anymore however we're still stupid and continue to use resin because did i mention i'm washing a bucket of resin yeah because the detail level is so awesome that is absolutely correct steve yeah the, like like all things in life of the detail is incredible like every vice of man it doesn't matter how deadly it is if it looks good exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's the best description of resin 
wow, mankind is a dumb, dumb animal. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Yeah, it's like, whoa, whoa, there you go. Uh, turn it up to 11. Okay. <laughs> okay, so details. Uh, well, I was going to say details of the material, but the big detail of the material is the fact that it's the highest detail of any material. Yep. Yeah, and by far. Yeah, it's not even, not even a close competition there. Um, it is both... Simultaneously easy to work with and a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, depending because resin is a large, uh, large category because it's all it's a mix of materials and can can vary from company to company. The now uh, not renowned but much bad word said about fail cast. Uh, Fine cast. <laughs> I was really looking for the right word. <laughs> yeah, you are. Was this on purpose? Because it's on. No, it wasn't. But uh, in the end, it fine. It's fine. But that that was risen, and there has been so much bad ink written about that. Yeah. Well, I think let's keep in mind that was a product designed to use their metal molds, so it had to and and be super fast setting. Right, because mm-hmm. they want to keep the production uh, production speed up, so it would set so fast that it would trap air all over the place. You'd have bubbles. That... Eventually, they did work out most of the problems, but by then they just in- irreparably damaged the reputation of the material. Mm-hmm. Um, but the models that did come out, uh, like that one were... four fill ca- fine cast, yeah, the, the ones that um, were actually good casts were really very nice. I have several nice fine cast models. Um, you know, would I recommend the material? Hell no. <laughs> but, you know, when it worked, it worked. Wait, what else That's can we say about it? a very good description about it. <laughs> when it worked, it worked. Well, it's, that says it all. <laughs> it's, it's about the best way to say it, right? Because it, yep. <laughs> it, it very much was a, well, when it, when it when it didn't look like absolute poop, it uh, it didn't look like poop. <laughs> Um, there are different color and quality of resin depending on the manufacturer too. I thought he was going to say a poop. <laughs> yeah, but you. <laughs> oh, you, no you can have different kind of poop too if you want, depending no on what you eat. You probably have the oldest uh, kids in the gang, so you're the one furthest away from strange poop. Oh, uh, you would be surprised. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't mean a, yours about after uh, any of your Taco Bell expedition, Taco. but. Uh, oh. Taco. But uh, my youngest one, even at six, sometimes. Uh, all right, all right. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say she. I was downstairs and she yelled, "Come and see my poop." I am totally going to mention that to her next time I see her. Let's uh, I'll see. I I know who it is. <laughs> like your dad was talking about your poop on the radio for hundreds of people to listen to. Just letting you know. It's okay, she, it's in English, so she won't understand. Yet. <laughs> Alright, uh, back on track. Enough with our poop side expedition, expedition. So different kind of resin, different manufacturer. Some are more brittle than others, I, I find. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Forge World, excellent resin. Yeah, uh, I'm not talking about their quality control because sometimes that can be a little bit lacking. I've had a lot of Forge World problems. They, they, their customer support is great, but the, sometimes the stuff you get is like, yeah, what's going on here? Well, you you get big miscast. <laughs> yeah, they don't change the the molds very frequently. I think. Anyway, that's just a conjecture on my part. But uh, the quality of the resin is very good, and it's it's. Uh, softer resin than some people use so it's not as brittle but it has more of a plasticky feel to it yeah they call it, they say it's a, a greener resin okay um if you get, ever get the chance to get your hands on the raging heroes resin characters in resin that it's amazing the quality it's amazing the level of details it's uh, over everything else I've seen. 
And then there's the stuff that uh, Impact uses, right? The Trollforge resin, resin, which is some of the most brittle, fragile stuff I have ever seen in my life. Um, you know, it's oh, yeah, man. My flying it's pony, detail, I wonder man. if he will survive the trip. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got piles of Impact miniatures. Um, the owner of the company is a super nice guy. Uh, they, they make an interesting product. They have a good selection of stuff for their chibi range, but the Trollforge resin is just a nightmare. Yeah. The the first chibi I painted for the the chibi swap, like Yom is in right now, was the, the Medusa for Impact. And just while painting, I broke the uh, bow twice. Yeah, do not end, drop I, that I, resin. I removed uh, part of it before shipping because I know it would break anyway. So yeah, I had to modify the model. Yeah, that stuff is is pretty spectacularly special. I uh, I was working on a little bit of a diorama for someone, and um, I I broke several models while working on it. So <laughs> okay, several models. Yeah. Well, it was a. I don't know if I'm going to get back to it in time. It was a piece I was considering taking to uh, Reapercon um, for the painting competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'd started painting it whew, early this year. And uh, it was a, a 40k diorama done with the Impact Chibis, essentially. <laughs> okay. So... Um, it was supposed to be a, a space wolf dreadnought fighting off a bunch of tyranids in, in chibi format. Um, That's cool. Influenced by uh, by Mark Maxey's uh, super awesome uh, chibi entry, which I think actually was supposed to be a unit entry at uh, Adepticon. But anyway, the Nurgle one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I saw that, and then I immediately went to Impact's booth and bought. Uh, Probably a hundred dollars worth of impact chibis. Um, At the price, that's a lot of chibi. Yeah. No, not a hundred dollars. Probably about well, about probably fifteen models. So I think they're about five dollars a piece. So it's, it wasn't a hundred, maybe a hundred bucks Canadian at a crappy exchange rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all that to say, um, yeah, super super brittle. And then, of course, you get, and anyone who, who does GW stuff will undoubtedly know that there's a huge recasting market in China. And that stuff, uh, some of that stuff is so brittle, you look at it funny and it explodes. <laughs> you know, I can't think of another hobby where something like that could survive. Where what? Well, like a. a a secondary market of like contraband recast product <laughs> would survive like for a hobby. Like, you know, I'm sure there's no like, you know, Chinese needlepoint reproducers or <laughs> like <laughs> what, what other, um, what other hobby would there be a market like that for where people feel so like gouged that they're willing to buy knockoffs that are recasts or reproductions. <laughs> I think there's a market for Lego pieces recast. Really? That's true. Yeah, there's, there's, that's true. There are Lego, like duplicate Lego makers. Huh. I mean, those things are pricey. My kids are starting to show interest. Oh no, <laughs> Legos, man, they cost an arm and a leg. Mega blocks, my friend. Mega blocks. <laughs> Much cheaper and fully compatible. And supporting a local Quebec company. I don't mean I'll be francophone. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know, but if we separate, it's probably the only company that'll survive. What, what, what else do we know about uh, resin? Like, we talk about the obi side, right? We we like it, obviously. Uh, but uh, for manufacturers, 
Is it well, it's fast, it's relatively cheap, it's whatever. low cost to produce. Materials are expensive, and I think failure rate is really high until you kind of get your mix right. Yeah, you, you get need to do a lot of tests. But you get super high quality uh, final product. Um, you know, it's with, with excellent easy. detail. Also, you don't need a, a huge setup like Metal. Or a, well, you don't need a spin casting machine like Metal do. You don't need a, a, a no, giant exactly. machinery for out plastic. I mean, if you look at... Um, why can I not remember their names? Emily? Emily and Matthew? Is that, yeah. that, is that right? Yeah. From um, On the, on the Lamb. Right? They, they were resin casting in their house. <laughs> yep. So it, you can do it anywhere. Well, for the manufacturer thing is that resin, you need to redo your molds from time to time because they don't get infinite use, I think. Well, it's no, the same with sure. same with metal, too. Okay. Metal... Um, I mean, galvanized rubber molds, the heat breaks down the molds over time from the poured metal. So they have to redo those molds as well. Oh, okay. So that's not really an exclusive thing to to resin. Uh, resin, I think, what uh, usually gets the molds is the uh, breaking the models out. Eventually yep. the, the molds start flicking, because you have to flex the mold, right? The mold so, tear, and you yeah. have uh, bits coming out. It was not... Uh... Surprising to find like piece of blue silicone in your Spartan models at the start. That's absolutely true. Or or your Forge Word models for that for that matter. I got uh, some when I first got into 40k yeah. and I bought a bunch of Forge World tanks. A lot of them had little bits of blue stuff stuck to them and I couldn't figure out what it was. Hmm. Ooh. Cool. Antoine, wanna, you want to mark that on the, the piece of paper at the time? Yep, that's why I was not speaking, so uh, I, I couldn't mark it. That's uh, Marie-André getting up from her chair. All right, so we've discussed uh, resin, metal, rustic, plastic. The only thing left really is what I thought of later on, which is that soft plastic that we see from X-Wing and, and Dust Studios. I mean, those are pre-assembled models. Uh, I mean, advantages, it's practically indestructible, right? You get, um, you know, crazy flex on those models. So you could throw them, drop them, anything short of stepping on them, they'll probably be fine. Uh, detail level is okay, but not great because the product is soft. You don't get nice sharp edges or anything, right? I think that's a fair assessment. Dion, what do you, you're, you've got a lot of experience with dust uh... models. I, I don't I, think there's no, any super sharp. I think they sharp. refined it a lot. Um, like their second generation of models, if I could say, uh, it, they're, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Like the, the stuff that I'll never get from Babylon. Some of the models were pretty good in soft plastic. Well, you say that, but you haven't seen them. Oh have no, you? no! Some people have it. Okay. Yeah. It's because I was part of the third wave. It's all the problems are for the third wave. So the, it's it, it was only by the way that you uh, supported like back at the Kickstarter. Like I was part of the third wave, and all the problems that happened for the third wave. But people from the first wave, they had the models. It looks great. There's a lot of details on it. <laughs> Lucky them, eh? And it's fine. And it's fine. Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Fine models, hmm. uh, small drawings, everything. I mean, if I if I think about X-wing and stuff, the model details are good, but there's no there's no real super hard edges, right? Then the scale's so small yeah. it doesn't really show. And uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think for dust, like the you know the models look good. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with them, certainly, um, for the ones I have. But but I don't really have anything with super crisp edges on it, so it's hard for me to hard for me to really say. I'll just say it's they're all right. For, for soft yeah. plastic? Yeah, better than most uh, board game pieces you'll see. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, but cleanup isn't really necessary because they're, they're only used in pre, you know, pre-assembled pre miniatures. Mold, yeah. Yeah. You do have some mold lines and you can clean them up with an exacto, but you have to be careful not to get burrs. 
because the material yeah. is soft, you can catch if your knife's not super sharp. And then you'll start getting like little like burrs like tear like tearing up. Sure. And that's similar to the rustic. Yeah, but rustic at least you can sand or something to try to get rid of it. You can't do anything with this stuff. It's like trying to sand an eraser, you know? It's But yeah, overall, uh, a decent material. It certainly gives you a, a low-cost miniature that uh, can be mass-produced. Dust was very reasonable um, for its box sets. I mean, a five-man infantry squad, I know it went up in price, but I think it started out at about $15 US. Something yeah, like it, yeah so. it was not even a lot higher than that. Yeah, I think it was like 19 Well... Uh, I think it was like 19 Canadian or something. And I think the exchange rate was still very close to par at the time, like 1.05 last time I bought something. So, yeah, so it went up a little bit, but not much. You're right. But, uh, I think overall they, they had a very reasonably priced product. Uh, uh oh. Sturdy also. Sorry, I said uh-oh because uh, I tried to touch up something. Uh-oh. And, uh, yeah. I didn't wait for paint to be dry, so now I lifted paint, so I've got, like, a water spot looking. Oh, oops. And I continue to work it, even though I'm yeah, not learning, apparently. <laughs> I'll let that dry before I go back to it. Dab it. Dab it with paint. <laughs> well, let's just yeah, like, dabbing. Like, just let it dry and fix it, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm not so smart. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, only on rare occasions when he's lacking sleep. <laughs> oh, rare occasions when I'm lacking sleep? You mean days of the week that end in Y? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a curveball. <laughs> yeah, sleep, sleep and me don't get along. We haven't spoken in a couple of years. And now I'm going to have a second kid. I must be freaking nuts. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. Where it stems from my... Uh, wait? <laughs> it stems from my, uh, you know, hidden desire to be more like Antoine. <laughs> not sleep? <laughs> Have two kids, not sleep? Always be exhausted? Yeah. <laughs> so... All right. Well, I think that ends if we that topic. go back to our subject, <laughs> uh, I think that covers about all the main material. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, what what are to... your? Oh, was it... go, Paul. I was, I was going to say what. Maybe we should. Uh, what's our preferences? That's what exactly what I was going for. Oh, uh, great minds! <laughs> great minds, Antoine. Great wow. minds. I'm not sure what Steve is wowing, but <laughs> well, you you thinking the same thing at the same time. It's so cute. Well, it's way we have been doing this for a couple time. of years now. <laughs> Mind you, it's way past my bad bedtime. That's true. Steve's gonna turn into a pumpkin soon, so yeah. I'm painting pumpkins. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So my preference. Oh, that's a tough one. I I really like um, plastic for the ease of ease of use and no chipping. Um, but I really like resin for the detail level. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say resin because it's a good compromise. It's fairly easy to work with if you get the good stuff, and uh, you know, it doesn't chip too badly because it's light and it you know. Um, yeah, resin is my uh, my choice. What about you guys? I have the exact same answer. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I mean, resin, if it's not too brittle, would be the would be the best. If we're certainly like, especially for like display minis, uh, if you're talking about gaming minis, or plastic. Yeah. Steve. Well, <laughs> Cinderella. <I'm... laughs> No, well, recently uh, I had the opportunity to go back with metal, and I really 
didn't like my experience and so I, I would say resin is my favorite one to work with because of the detail level and yes it's more brittle for small pieces like sword and stuff like that but it's much more fun to paint and it's so light as well when you lift the model and you play on, on the table with it so yeah resin it is for me well there we have it yeah, it yeah I think I was going to say I think that's everyone isn't it mm. yeah yeah unless you have a secret friend you're talking to <laughs> no I I don't I don't so, have any friends go for resin people because you know we're pros we know what we're talking about so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of us are pros I, I won't uh, I won't put myself in that club. Yeah, me neither. Next two of us. <laughs> That's right. That's a club of two. So I, sp I suppose it depends on how you define pro. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave that there so you can decide if it's an insult or not. <laughs> oh, no, no, I know where how to take it, but I'm not going to answer it. That's, that's it. I'm afraid to be Zen here. No, actually, actually, I was going to say, it depends how you, uh, if, if you call a pro anyone that's been paid to paint stuff, then I think all of us are technically pros, and I'm sure it's all happen happened to all of us. No. Okay, well, three of us are pros, and then there's Steve. Three pros and an amateur. Amateur. Oh, well, sounds... I got to ask if I was doing commission work at Temple Council. Can yeah, I... see it yeah, I remember you were counts. amazed. You're like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> but your stuff, your stuff looked really good. Everyone loved those. Uh, what call it? Morticians. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them. Thanks, Paul. Go for best painted team. Tackle ball too. Wow, I think we've lost momentum. This is a good sign um, that it's uh, time, time to, to wrap off. up the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lots of dead air and not a whole lot of content going on right now. So I'm pretty much finished uh, uh, grayscales here. So cool. a good productive evening. Yeah. And I'm pretty. Uh, I'm. I finished my uh, grocery set too. So good. I finished masking my models with blue tack and. Uh... I'm waiting for the base to dry because I put some washes on it. And, I, <laughs> and I'm done with my five tree stumps. And the uh, rest of the terrain is uh, pretty over halfway done. So, good time. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. people are super impressed right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they get things done. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy... I have to say, I'm really, really happy with these Guild Ball models, the speed that they paint. Um, I mean, we've been recording for, what, about an hour and a half? Yeah, around that. So it's been about an hour and a half, and I have about uh, an hour um, in this model before that. And he's pretty much done, and he's, I'd say he's done to a, a fairly decent standard. I mean, he won't win awards, but I think he'll look better than than a lot of people's models on the table. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. They, they just seem to paint easy, you know? They're, they're just... Yeah. They've got just the right amount of detail. Yeah, when you really don't paint model. tartan, they do. They do. Yeah, if, you don't, if you're not retarded, then they're uh, excellent. Yep. And uh, they paint Precisely. quite. Precisely. And then there's Yom. Yep. <laughs> retarded Yom. Bending tartan. Did we lose Antoine? He's not nope. saying anything. No, he's still there. Okay, well, I guess uh, we will sign off for this week, and I will get this edited and up, and people can uh, enjoy our ramblings and unedited mess. <laughs> and well, relatively unedited. The sound of the the paint, uh, um, the the cleaning of the the paintbrush, the brushes. Oh, was it really bad? I didn't. Notice. I don't know. I, I had some, but I tried to mute my mic. I, 
I know we had a bit of uh, airbrush, I think, at the beginning. No, oh, I didn't hear it. Huh. No. Well, I didn't hear brush. Okay. I thought I heard something. No, I, but I cleaned my brushes and I didn't mute my mic. I was doing yeah, it no, on I... purpose. I mean, it's a hobby podcast. And we want to make sure that listeners know that we are doing hobby. Yeah, We're not I, pretending. I didn't, I, I didn't airbrush, so for once. Actually, I have to say, uh, since I since I started these guys, I haven't really had to airbrush anything. Yeah, well, they're they kind of small, too. That would stop me from airbrush. Not you, I know, but... Paul can airbrush anything. Yeah. Well, I think that's a bit of a stretch. You know, I would try to airbrush anything, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's like, oh, can I save myself 36 seconds? Then I will airbrush it. Now I'm just taking some pictures. Some, as we call it in the business, proof of performance. Oh, yeah, I should do that too. So I'll finish cracking this week. And I got a, I've got salt left to do. I got to finish cracking. He's got probably another hour and a half in there. I've got salt to do. And I gotta base everyone. So on the whole, not too bad. I hope you get to play uh, Saturday. Well, I I've I'm stupid. So I I booked it, and then I wasn't sure I was gonna play because of the fact um, I uh, had practiced really, and I didn't know if I was gonna get my models done. But looks you, like the models gonna get done. You beat and me. I, and yeah, I played a little bit last week to kind of refresh myself. So I'd be willing to go. Uh, Antoine's already found a replacement, but there's probably going to be a drop because there's always a drop. Uh, so I'd still probably have a spot. But then I remembered that we have furniture being delivered on Saturday. <laughs> no. So no, that kind of killed <laughs> that kind of killed my my aspirations. Yeah. But I may drop by to uh, visit the gang and see how things are going. And uh, I know I've got a I've got a painting night going on Friday night here at my house. Um, because uh, Ben is coming over to finish his guild for the Taco Bowl the next day. <laughs> so you guys are all welcome if uh, if you're bored and you know, want to come on over. My house is is open. Well, I might be painting depending if I get lucky or not. So we'll yeah, we could we could you could come over via the internet. We could do yeah. a, a hangout. It's gonna help me stay all night long to paint the, the two models for the next morning. Online. Okay, no, stop. Online. Okay, so signing off now. Um, <laughs> wow. All right. We're losing well, stamina. We're losing yeah, stamina. We're, 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 now we're, 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 we're crazy stamina. rambling. Yeah, we're crazy, <laughs> crazy rambling. At least I didn't say, sing Let It Go. That's the first on the podcast. Usually yeah, okay. it's always Let It Go. Shh. Yeah, it's all good, Steve. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Thanks very much for, uh, for hanging out tonight and doing the podcast. And yeah, cool. uh, hopefully we can do this more often. And if this format works for people, let us know, uh, because this is certainly easier than what we usually try to do, and a lot more fun for everyone, at least on this end. So if you like the content and liked us hobbying while uh, while uh, doing the podcast, let us know. And with that, we'll hopefully see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, geeks. Thanks for listening to Geeks of the North. If you want to contact us, you can email us at geeksofthenorth at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeks of the north, or follow us on Twitter at geeks of the north. You can follow me, Paul, at PR Filio, Antoine at Eltonio Berg, Steve at B underscore Steve, and if you really feel the need, I guess you can follow Yo. He's at Yo Master. Breaks and outro music by Ladrav. You can listen to them at ladrav.bandcamp.com. See you next time, geeks. Thank you for checking out a United Geeks Network family member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find The Game Huntress. Wherever there's XP or achievements, The Game Huntress blog will always be on the hunt. 
the United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let it go.